Welcome to Train Hot Dog, the podcast, shut up lady, I'm talking now, the podcast where I talk to myself on a train, um, so I was wanting to do a, uh, Ernest Goes to Camp podcast, and I was thinking it's really like, covering pretty much the same ground that Dwarf on Golf did, but, like, and, and maybe I'd be repeat, just repeating myself, and making the same jokes, but... On the other hand, fuck it, I genuinely want to, like, research this and, um, bring you information about, uh, Ernest Goes to Camp, so I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna, you know, searching right now, searching, Ernest goes to camp. Ernst goes to gasp. Get camp. Oh, also Ernst, not Ernest. Well, anyway, Google knew what I meant. Ernst goes to camp. Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Ernest Goes to Camp is a 1987 comedy film starring jo- directed by John R. Sherry III and starring Jim Carney. It is the second film to car- feature the character of Ernest P. Worrell and was shot in Nashville, Tennessee. And it's oh, it was the second. Second. Oh, what's the other one? What's the first Ernest? Oh God! I just clicked on the Ernest P. Worrell on Wikipedia, and the first thing I saw was his profile picture, which is very, shall we say, muggy. Uh. Ernest P. Worrell is a fictional character portrayed by American actor Jim Varney in a series of television commercials and later television series as well. Oh, it was commercials first. Interesting. Ernest was created by the Nashville advertising agency Cardin and Cherry and was used in various local television ad campaigns. The only national product he garnered with the Coca-Cola Company's sodas, checks, and Taco John's. The first Ernest commercial filmed in 1980 advertised an appearance by the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders at Beach Bend Park, an amusement park near Bowling Green, Kentucky. The format and the commercial seldom varied. The rubber-faced (laughs) Ernest, he sure is rubber-faced, almost always dressed in a denim vest and baseball cap, appeared at the door of an unseen and unheard but seemingly unwilling neighbor named Vern. The spots were structured in a way to allow the viewer to be Vern. And as Varney looked directly in the camera whenever Vern was addressed, this explains so much of my youth. Ernest's seemingly pointless conversations with Vern, which are actually a monologue due to Vern never responding, and have <laughs> rambled around, around to a favorable description of the sponsor's product, followed by a signature close, know what I mean? Well, I'm pretty good at that, know what I mean. I'm, I'm so... I'm sad. I didn't even do it on purpose. It was just... It's written like that. And I just did it. While Vern is never shown to ever say anything, it is implied that he finds Ernest to be an unwelcome pest due to him trying to slam the door in Ernest's face on a few occasions. Vern also shakes his head no whenever Ernest invites him to do something. Ernest, despite having good intentions, is utterly oblivious to Vern's apparent distress regarding him and is always regards Vern as his closest buddy and confidant. Alright. Films. Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. Unnamed cameo role. Dr. Otto's disguise. Okay. So, this is not an Ernest movie. It's just starring Jim Varney and has a little bit of Ernest in it. I think. Yeah, Jim Varney just played, like, all the characters in this movie. All right. So, Ernest Goes to Camp really was the first one. Oh, let's see, what do we have? Ernest Goes to Camp. Ernest Saves Christmas. Ernest Goes to Jail. Ernest Scared Stupid. Ernest Rides Again. That one is... I guess that was, a. Uh, oh, that's where they got the profile picture from. I was just gonna say, like, all the other ones are, like, they 
explain the theme in the title. But uh, Ernest Rides Again, it does too. It's just a western. Oh, wait, it's not a western. Ernest, a history professor, discovered a long lost revolutionary war cannon and must protect it from others who want the ju precious jewels hidden inside. goes to school, direct a video. All these are direct video from here on. Slam dunk Ernest. Ernest goes to Africa. Ernest in the army. Um, Cook Sam said in 2011 that Ernest spaced out may have gotten as far as a film treatment. Sam said about the film, I believe it was kind of a lost in space epic. It seemed like there were astronauts and maybe a space capsule. Where, where did he say this? Why would he talk about this? Coke Sam's. Oh, it's knowtheartist.com. It was an original. It was rather uh, an interview. Sam said a script had been written for Ernest and the Voodoo Curse. So we went back to the Abaddon Costello meet Frankenstein kind of thing. It had a really bad guy and happened on the island like Hawaii. So we had Voodoo as a high priest. It was like the idiot version of Raiders of the Lost Ark. We had lines of zombies, voodoo potions, and Ernest pretending to be a zombie. Um, Ernest and the Water Baby. Oh, it's Ernest meets E.T. Okay, yeah, these, though none of these exist. Uh, and there was going to be a musical. Um, but it never materialized due to lack of financing. Sam's, Sam's Coke said the film never existed. Barney had actually been in consideration for a role in the 1999 film Pirates of the Plain. commercials on VHS. In 2012, a film reboot was announced tentatively, tentatively titled Son of Ernest. As suggested by the title of the film, will focus on Ernest's long-lost son, presumably Ernie P. Worrell, as mentioned above. I didn't realize it was mentioned above. I think we need to find out more about that. Also, when did Jim Varney die? Oh man, look at that handsome guy. Uh, in 2000, age During the filming of Treehouse Hostage in August 1998, Varney started developing a bad cough. At first it was thought that he might have a cold, because of the climate of the area where he was being filmed, however, as the cough became worse, Varney became noticing, began noticing blood in his handkerchief. Oh, uh, lung cancer, that's it. Oh, that's a bummer. He was a chain smoker, and had also filmed a public service announcement about smoking in the, as artist in the 80s. smoking as soon as he was diagnosed. He died anyway. It's funny how that works. Right, so what is this film where he looks attractive? Too much of a 
too much of a storied career for me to really scan this thing using the, using my eyes. Why don't I television commercials? Yes, popularity, other roles. Thank you. That's what that was the problem. I didn't scroll past the finish stuff. These are all like shitty years. All the years are like in random order. It's not very helpful. Okay, here we go. He played a small role in the 1995 action film The Expert as a Weapons Dealer Named Snake. Okay, this is not actually a movie anybody saw, so no, effectively, Ernest P. Worrell, P standing for power tools, is the only thing Jim Varney has ever done. Um, what was that movie, Son of Ernest? Son of Ernest, IMDb. San Francisco SFO Movie pilot. This is just a... We've got a plot synopsis. When his hometown is threatened... In, when his hometown is threatened, so it's full of typos, or at least has one. The son of legendary S.P. Worrell must save the day, writer Dan Ewan, and then there's no more information than that. Um, moviepilot.com This is a simple expan- This is a expanding the franchise of the new member of the Whirl family tree. It's been 30 years since Garden and Cherry Advertising Agency created the little character that Jim Varney had brought to life in those fun RSP Whirl movies. This guy can't write. Jimothy. Jimothy Beck Holt is the name of this guy who can't write. He started on your local TV station with commercials. Uh, I don't need, I've just read a bunch of history about Ernest. I don't need to read more. I want to, what is this thing? So, oh. Okay, I could watch, like, audition videos by the guy who wants to play Ernest's son, but I'm not going to do that. Oh. Son of Ernest turns as a reboot of long-running comedy series. Have you seen Billy Crank's Son of... Ernest gets a reboot with Son of Ernest? These are all, like, dated 2012, so, um... Who knows if they actually exist. Son of Ernest Hemingway. Gregory Hemingway. Also known as Gloria Hemingway later in later life, was the third and youngest child of author Ernest Hemingway. He became a physician and author of a memoir of life with Ernest Hemingway. Uh, gender dysphoria. persona remained male, as Gregory gave occasional interviews about his father in the latest 1999. Yeah, um... It looks like he never quite figured out how to handle his gender dysphoria, his or her, whatever you want to call it. Jack Hemingway. Maybe that one will be a little less confusing. Okay, this joke, I need to back up, because 
the Hemingway kids all have terrible lives. Jim Varney, the rubber-faced goon. No media. The first DVD release was on September 3rd, 2002, from Walt Disney Studios. Home Mail Entertainment, Bill Creek Entertainment re-released that on J January 18th as part of a two-disc triple feature set. Oh, this is Ernest Goes to Camp. The doors are closing. Please stand clear at the doors. Second Blu-ray double camp, double feature with Camp Nowhere was released. Oh, what is Camp Nowhere? Camp Nowhere is a 1994 American adventure comedy film directed by Jonathan Prince. Uh, stars Christopher Lloyd, Jonathan Jackson, and Jessica Alba in her film debut. Morris Mud Himmel has a problem. His parents want to send him away to a summer computer camp. He hates going to summer camp if he could get anything to get out of it. Talking to his friends, he realizes they are all facing the same sentence of boring summer camp. Together with them, he asks his opponent to grant their own summer camp with no parents, no counselors, and no rules. They back me a former drama, former drama teacher, Dennis Van Walker, into helping. He had bought an AMC Gremlin and failed to make most of the payments. He is being pursued by soon retired collector T.R. Polk and agrees to help them in return for $1,000. With Dennis's help, the kids trick the parents into sending them to the camp. Then rent a campground that used to be a hippie commune in the 60s and 70s with a cabin and a lake. Some parents believe it is a computer camp, while others believe it is a fat camp, military camp, or an acting camp. The kids use the money the parents paid for the camp to buy toys and food. After a little while, they get bored and wonder if they should just return home. That's the moral of the story. If you do something crazy, you're going to get bored and go home. Uh, the police were called. Wait, no. Their parents want to come visit the kids, despite being told there are no parents' days. Mud makes a plan to trick them, and along with his friends, they keep the camp concealed. In a matter of hours, they fix it up and set up different scenarios, representing different camps, bad camp, computer camp, military camp. Their plan works, and the parents don't suspect a thing. T.R. Polk then meets a state trooper who was also seeking Dennis, and they find their way into camp and catch him. The police are called in Mud. Please uh, try to wait for the authorities. Mud is confronted by police and begs Dennis from them. And soon after Dennis turns himself in, Mud explains the whole thing is his idea. He uses the rest of the money to pay a TR Polk to retire with a perfect record. Dennis gets off the hook and the kids leave her home and they got the greatest summer of their lives. Let's find the IMDb page for Ernest Goes to Camp. Actually, let's go find the IMDb page for Slam Dunk Ernest. Ernest P. Worrell becomes a basketball star after an angel bearing an uncanny resemblance to Kareem Abdul Jabbar gives him a pair of magic sneakers. The doors are closing. Right. Clear Trivia. Door. When Ernest and his team are playing against others, check out the names. Kiki Ki Fish. Kiki Ki was the name of the stamp, and Ernest goes to camp. Two of the brothers' hardware. Two of us, the last name of Tom and Bobby, and Ernest Garrett Stupid. They sold hardware. And Tranter Dairy. Tranter was the name of the troll, and Ernest Garrett Stupid, who was defeated by milk. Last Ernest film to see any sort of release from Touchstone Pictures, along with Mr. Bean and Pee Wee Herman. Ernest G. Borrell is considered to be one of the greatest family entertainers of all time. That's a that's good trivia. Uh, Slam Dunk Ernest goofs errors in geography. The sign on the back of the stadium clearly states Alberta, province of Canada. Goofs. Warning spoilers, um, and there's nothing on the spoiler section. Alright, Ernest Goes to Africa, 1997.
The title says it all. There's a mix-up involving stolen diamonds, which Ernest is naturally made into a yo-yo and given to his would-be girlfriend, Renee, but Renee wants a man of action. Uh, trivia. Along with Mr. Bean and Pee Wee Herman, Ernest B. Royal seems to be one of the greatest family entertainers of all time. At one point, Ernest Mer mentioned a fictional movie called Little Smith and the Curse of Hitler's Brain. That sounds really good, actually. The Indiana Jones reference is obvious, but there was actually a movie called They Saved Hitler's Brain. It's not interesting trivia. These are just really sloppy. Inanity. There's no goofs for this one either. Someone really needs to, like, get on this. Watch all these movies and add appropriate goofs and trivia. Ernest in the Army. Along with Mr. Bean and Pee Wee. And someone just added this to all of the Ernest movies. That's so funny. Ah, Ernest in the Army. Jim Varney's final appearance is Ernest P. World. End of an era. Stupid. Headstones are seen. Wait, I missed it. I lost it. The emblem on the side of the Briarville police car reads Ignoramus and Ad Infinitum. The last Ernest film to be released theatrically by Touchstone Pictures. This is because many kids found the film too scary. Many people agreed that the thought of a troll. Shilling your trolls and children. And the trolls' deaths to be very disturbing. The Slum Dunk Ernest did see a video release from Touchstone. Many people believe the meme Troll Face came from this film. When Ernest is about to run over the trench of the troll, he says the line, How about a bumper sandwich how about a bumper sandwich booger lips? After this, he laughs and his face is what Troll Face is based on. Along with Miss Pee -wee, Mr. Bean and Pee-wee Herman, Ernest B. Worrell is considered to be one of the greatest family entertainers of all time. Headstones are seen in this film's poster, but there is no cemetery in the film itself. And that's all for today. I'll be back tomorrow with more Ernest Scared Stupid Trivia. The end.